All right, so we're going to continue on with part number three, the guide bracket for engineering design 2020-2021. Uh, again, looking at the cover sheet, we're looking at an origin on the front view that's going to be right here at this corner. Um, again, we want to make sure we get that in the right spot so we can get our center of mass to be correct. So looking at this part right here, stand this up a little bit. I'm basically going to, uh, on the front view, draw a, a rough outline of this shape right here. I'm going to go ahead and do a, a, an extrusion back because we want to keep it on this front corner. And then I'm going to go ahead from there and cut off this arc right here. And then cut off this T at the bottom. That's basically from this shape here. And finish off using the hole wizard to finish this. Okay. Most common mistake on this one here was primarily getting kids had the wrong dimensions and the wrong spots. You've got to be very careful as you go through this. Now again, going into my SOLIDWORKS, we have a metric part here. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this part off and go into a new part. Uh, and again, metric, or actually, excuse me, inches, and say OK. Now, again, I'm going to start on that front plane. I'm going to take my drawing view down here. Actually, excuse me, my drawing view of this part here. I'm going to slide this over into my other view so I can see this. Minimize that, sorry. And go to my front plane. And what I'm going to do at this point is use my line tool. And starting from here, I'll go out. I go up, go a little bit longer, down at an angle, perpendicular, and back. Okay, and actually what I'll do is I'm going to get rid of uh, this line for a second. I'm going to come back to my line tool because I want to add that piece on that goes up because I'm going to try to do this and try to knock this all out real quickly. And I'm going to go to here. Okay, now a couple things. First of all, these two lines are parallel. It looks like they are showing that. Uh, this line and this line here will also be parallel. Uh, I'm going to go ahead at this point and add some dimensions. Specifically, this one here is going to be 0.5. Uh, this one here from this bottom edge will be 3.38. Okay, I'm not going to panic there. I'm going to pull this one long again. And, whoops, hold on. Let me adjust this up like so. I'm going to go ahead and add in that 45 degree angle by clicking on the angle line in the horizontal and pulling up and to my left, 45 degrees. Now, the length of this line from this point here to this line here is going to be, and this is important, this is in this view, and this is where a lot of kids mess this up, it is 2.76. That line there is this edge here. This point right here, yes, it's a radius, but if you think about it, the radius goes all the way around, so straight up and down here from this point here to that point there is 2.76. So I'm going to dimension this at 2.76. All right. At this point, this dimension here will be 1 inch. This right here will be 0.5 inches. And then the big piece is the length of this, again, using the same concept I did before. If you look at this view here, that is from this point, which is on this line, that is this shelf, to that point there is 2.12. So I'm going to come in here and make this 2.12. All right, now at this point here, I just got to make sure that these are all... This should be perpendicular with this here, and I don't think it is, and I just made it so, and now I have it fully defined. Now, again, I need my origin to stay on this front plane. So when I go to my features, I need to extrude back and away from this, otherwise your origin will end up on the back side of your part. So I'm going to reverse my direction. I'm going to extrude this a distance of 2 inches. So I'm going to go in here and type in 2, enter and hit my check mark. Never mind the balsa, we're going to change this to a chrome stainless steel by right clicking on balsa, edit material, go to my steel, and in alphabetic order look for a chrome stainless steel. Apply and close. Control S for save. We are going to call this the guide bracket. underscore, last name, and hit save. 
Okay, now from here what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this top face. I'm going to do a sketch, spacebar, normal tip. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply grab a circle at that midpoint, because the center of the arc is going to be right there, and I'm going to attach it to the end line. And what I'm going to do is just make this and this tangent. Okay. Now all I'm going to do from here is I'm going to simply take my line tool, I'm going to draw a little bit of inside the circle, come across and into the circle, and then I'm going to finish by trimming off what I don't need. In this case, these parts right here. Okay, now this turn blue, so what I'll do is just make sure that this is collinear to that line, so I know it's on there. Okay, from here I'm just going to go to Features, Extruded Cut, through all, and my selected contours, I'm just going to left click inside each of these little arc pieces and hit my check mark. Okay, so now that piece has been cut off. Okay, I'm going to do a control S to save. <clears throat> now, I'm going to highlight this back face right here, space bar normal 2, and start a new sketch. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this view down here to create this little T-cut. Okay, so I'm going to use that view there to get that T-cut defined. So I'm going to take my line tool. I'm going to come up here to this top line. I'm going to come in, down, over, back, up, in, up, and over. Now this actually, this line down here should be touching that line. I made a mistake. So that should be collinear. All right. Now for the rest of this, this measurement right here is going to be 0.24. And then I'm going to make that point here and this point here horizontal. Okay. The distance from this left side to this right side is supposed to be 1.24. Um, you'll see this overhang from right here should be 0.24. And let me see if there's any other dimensions I need to make here. So in this case, now I need to make sure that this box, so I'm going to take this line here and attach this line at the midpoint. And I want to make sure that this side here, control key, and this side here are equal. Okay. Now, this also line here and this line here, oh, actually, excuse me, 1.24. Uh, what am I missing here? I've got the height, the distance in, the 1.24. This line here and this line here should be, oops, let me find this center line. Oops, I've got to hover. Uh, where did that line go? I need that center point, sorry, mid, uh, midpoint of that line, and this line here to be at the midpoint. So this should be dead center. And if you need to draw a center line, you could have done it that way also. I use relationships. You could have also done it with a center line, and that would have made it probably a little bit easier. Okay, now from here, I'm just going to go to Features, Extruded Cut, and I am now going to do a Through All and hit my check mark. Okay, so now that piece is done. So if you're looking at it from an isometric, we're pretty much done with this part. The only thing left to do is to add in our hole wizard, a counter bore hole, to this bottom face. So under my features, I'm going to do a hole wizard, counter bore hole. I'm going to go ahead and do a restore default value, so I get all this done. I'm going to go here and make sure it's an ANSI inch. Binding head screw is fine, and I'm going to say show custom sizing. Now what I'm going to do with that custom sizing, if you recall from last year, is we are going to enter these three numbers in order, 1, 2, and 3, and the last thing in the last box will be through all. Okay, so I'm going to take and put these numbers in exactly the way I see them. So the first number is 0 .312, enter, turns yellow. Second number is 0 .5, turns yellow. That indicates you've changed it. 0.24 turns yellow. And then the last thing should be through all. Okay, now I'm going to go to my positions tab. 
I'm going to highlight, make sure I'm normal to this face. I'm going to take and drop four of these on here. And then one escape, turn on your smart dimension, and then go ahead and dimension these to their correct spots. So 0.62 from the edge, 2.12. Between each other, a half inch up. Okay, now I'm gonna use some relationships here. I'm gonna make that point there and this point over here horizontal. I'm gonna make this point here and this point here vertical. Make this point here and this point here vertical. And then make this point and this point horizontal. The only dimension I need to add is between these two circles here, or these two holes, and that will be one inch. And at this point, all four of these little asterisk symbols should be black, and it should say fully defined at the bottom of the screen. Hit your green check mark, and now you have your countable holes in the bottom. So now from an isometric point, your part is complete. Control save. Okay. Now from here what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in my drawing. Now this was the big question is how do I get all these views? So I'm going to start with a GHSA inch drawing and say OK. And then I'm going to come in and get my guide bracket. I'm going to double click. I'm going to start with my front view, preview, hidden lines on, and scale at 1 to 2. I'm going to drop my front view, cross me right here, top view above, right side view, Isometric view. Pull that there and add color. I'm going to take off all the extra lines. And now from here, I'm just going to go through and clean up my, each of my views, make sure there's no extra lines that don't need to be there by hitting and deleting them. Okay. Now, we have two other views that are in here. I'm actually going to get these and then I'm going to leave you to do the dimensioning. Okay. Because these two views are the ones that we're being asked about. All right. These are auxiliaries. They are not section views. These are what we call auxiliary views. It's very important to understand that anytime you take something off an angled surface, you're using auxiliary. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an auxiliary view, and then from there we're going to do a crop view because we're going to cut off the excess. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my view layout tool, auxiliary view, and I'm going to click on that top line. I will pull above and left click. I will left click on my A and then grab the grip. Okay, I'm just going to grab and pull my arrows. These are called grips. And I'm going to bring this in a little bit tighter and move this up a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to take from here, I'm going to take the hidden lines off, go to the third box, and then I'm going to turn on my sketch tools. And I'm going to use, oops, my sketch tools. I'm going to use my spline tool. Now, you could just draw with some lines. It would be just fine. But if you want to look fancy, I'm just going to draw a little bit here, add another one up here, a little bit there, maybe another one over here, kind of create a curve, kind of wrap it around like so. Now, the key is I need this entire sketch to be in light blue. As long as it's light blue, it can now be cropped. Okay, to do a crop view, I go to View Layout, and I hit the word Crop View. Okay, now in this case, it wants to know what is my uh, selected drawing view, which, no, excuse me, not alternate position view, sorry, crop view. It wants to know, please sketch, sketch a close, uh, whatever, close view. So if you left click on that, and now go to Crop View, it will cut it off. Okay, I'm going to get rid of these extra lines, I don't need them because this is the view I want, and there you go. So now I can make any adjustments I need to, move my view AA, and there is your crop view. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing down here. I'm going to do a, a view BB. I'm going to move this up a little bit. I'm going to go to auxiliary. I'm going to click on this view here, drop it below. Okay, you see the B is a little big, so I'll pull that in. Come down here and pull this one in. Grab the center grip and pull this one like so. Now, exactly the same thing. I'm going to take the hidden lines off, and then I'm going to take and go to my sketch toolbar, and I am going to go and draw another spline. I'm going to go here, like so, 
And I'm just going to get a little creative. You can get as creative as you want. You could also just do a simple square. I would not care. All I want to do is just make sure that you have a closed figure. Once it's closed, go to View Layout, Crop View. Okay, so now there you go. Now I'm going to adjust these views a little bit so I can get this View BB to fit in here. All right, I'm going to make sure I have all these extra little center lines off or whatever I need to take off of here. Like so, like so. Oops, nope, nope, don't, don't, don't delete that. I want to get rid of that line instead and that line instead. All right, now at this point, all you have to do is come back, add in your dimensions, and you are done. Okay, the only thing I will actually talk about a little bit here is your center mark that goes in here on this part. That is under annotation, center mark, use document defaults unchecked, extended lines unchecked. Click on your arc. Okay, hit your check mark, and now you have your center, or your center mark in there. Again, you can go through your process of going through and copying and pasting. I could do a simple copy here, control C, okay, minimize that, add in my note tool, drop this into place, and do a control V. Okay, again, I'm going to highlight all this, do a left justify. Okay, I'm going to come in here and highlight and make sure this is all font 12, all right, and so forth. All right, now don't forget when you're done with this, you need to actually put the correct numbers in there. All right, and again, you can make small adjustments there, push that up a little bit, and so forth. At this point, though, I would expect you to be able to go through and dimension the rest of this on your own, which is very straightforward. Change your title block, put your proper first initial last name, correct date, period, and scale in here. When you're done with that, save and upload both this drawing and the guide bracket part to Schoology to get credit. That said, that's all I've got. Good luck.